Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Irene. And I'm Jacques of the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. Medical genetics involves the diagnosis and management of hereditary disorders. But sometimes routine genetic screening can fail to detect the variants that cause the disease. For example, Taylor and co-workers recently used next generation sequencing to sequence 271 individuals having a large spectrum of disorders in which a previous genetic screening did not identify causal variants. With next generation sequencing, they were able to identify disease-causing variants for 21% of cases. The percentage rose to 34% when considering Mendelian disorders and 57% when analyzing family trios. This is a promising result. In a trio where you can include the information from both parents, the results are much better. But you have to be careful. Even if you discover a new potential disease variant, it does not prove that it is the actual cause of the disease you still have to establish the pathogenicity of the variant and prove causality. The other issue is the time it takes to come to a diagnosis. So how could it impact a clinical setting? You know, in a report from Lancet, Willie et al. used sequencing retrospectively in a neonatal and pediatric intensive care setting. They were able to diagnose 20 out of 35 infants. That's about 57%. With standard genetic testing, they could only provide a diagnosis to three infants. That's only 9%. Timing is critical in acute illness care. And there are two major limiting factors in obtaining a full genome. The sequencing reaction and the data analysis. The previous study used to, uh, to take about 50 hours was StatSeq. In a recent paper, the same group managed to reduce that to 26 hours, almost half. The improvements came from an ultra-rapid run mode and Drajan, an algorithm that can do the sequence alignment, variant detection, and genotyping in 40 minutes. Wow, what an accomplishment. Was this from receipt of the blood sample to diagnosis? Yes. And how precise were the results? They had a sensitivity and specificity of 99.9% .9 with a 47 time genome coverage and 99.4% with a 20 times genome coverage. This includes both substitutions and indels. That is impressive and really shows the potential of this approach. However, this is a small study and the authors note that more work will be needed before the use of StatSeq becomes routine. We'd love to hear your thoughts about our show and topics you would like us to discuss in the future. To subscribe to our Simon channel, find other episodes, or get more information, click on the boxes on your screen. Until next time, bye. Bye.